Hey guys, and happy Homebrew Wednesday. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Crack open with an IPA that was sent to me by Tormod. It's a uh, gentleman that lives here in Norway and he wanted his water tested so he uh, sent me a sample of water and sent me a couple beers. Unfortunately the uh, stout that was in the package, he sent me two beers, an IPA and a stout, but the stout broke uh, on its way here. So let's go ahead and try the IPA. It's been in the fridge for actually I have to admit a couple weeks so uh, yeah. There it is. Well, I thought that glass was a lot cleaner than it was, than it appears. But anyways, hopefully it doesn't uh, do the uh, beer too much injustice. <sighs> Beautiful aroma on that. Oh, it's got like the centennial floral notes to it. Almost like a little bit of a, a orange tangerine citrus from Something like uh, Amarillo, maybe. Maybe a little bit of Simcoe as well. I don't know. Smells really, really nice and inviting. Thanks a lot, Tormod. Appreciate it. Cheers. It's like a classic West Coast IPA. Very nice. Hmm. Okay, what have I been doing? Um, today I did a brew. Uh, I did a 10 gallon batch of a red saison. Uh, here it is. Here's the uh, the color for it. Um, came out at uh, 1050. Um, might be a little bit darker than what I was hoping to uh, to go for, but yeah, there it is. Um, I'm doing a split batch on this one, so. Uh, there was a suggestion made by uh, Weekend Brewer up on the comments from a couple videos ago and uh, we were talking about Saison's I believe and then um, he said he, he recommended using the, the Omega Yeast Labs 500 that's the uh, Saison Monsters or no Saison Steins Monster um, Saison Yeast so I actually went ahead and picked up one of those uh, here, able to get it now at the uh, Yemabrig store in Strumen. So uh, if you guys are looking for some Omega Yeast Labs, make sure to uh, give those guys a call and see if they have what you want in stock. Um, also, uh, for that one, I went ahead and pitched that yeast on it. And um, I'm gonna follow it up after primary I'm going to put in, I also got the Omega Yeast Labs 218, all the Bretts. So that's going to go in afterwards and uh, be in secondary probably for a few months and hopefully get some of that bready characteristics into that. Now, before I go any further and talk about the next part of it, I do want to say that in terms of bittern for this Saison, um, I didn't want to do bitterin because I'm actually going to use some wild yeast in the the next uh, five gallons. So one five gallon batch, I'm using Omega Yeast Labs, um, and then in the second batch, I pitched the uh, Safe Brew T58 yeast. So that's going to be in primary. For secondary, for secondary, it was crystal clear before I brought it down here in the brewery, but it's been sitting upstairs. I got a pretty nice collection of Cantillon dregs that I've been saving up for quite some time. But it's got a very nice looking yeast cake on there. Nice and light uh, cream color. So, um, yeah, I also didn't really show that to you, but I stirred it up a bit, but you can see there's the little pellicle right there on the top of it it's kind of mixing in now uh, and that's okay because I'm gonna dump most of that uh, just have enough to uh, swirl it up and then put it in to secondary so that's going to be on the t58 
uh, for primary, and then I'll follow it up with the uh, Cantillon drags in secondary. And then I'm going to put that into a uh, fermenter in my better bottle, and it's going to sit probably for the better part of a year before I even give it a taste. So this is my first sort of diving into trying to create a wild ale. Uh, and uh, yeah, based on uh, Cantillon dregs, can't go wrong. Maybe you can, I don't know, it's all about the grain bill. So let's go down to the bittern because the bittern was interesting on this one because I didn't want to add in too much hops that would inhibit any of the bacterial um, souring capabilities in the secondary. So what I did was I collected 14 and a half gallons in my brew kettle and then I took one and a half gallons upstairs and put it on the kitchen stove to boil for 60 minutes with 25 grams of azaka. So that bitter in addition uh, it came out to about three quarts to almost a, a gallon after the hour boil. It was a very nice, it was a simmering boil. And so then I poured that into the, the, um, into the Omega Yeast Labs, uh, Saison Stein's Monster. So I'm going to get about 20 to 25 IBUs from that addition that I added into the, into the primary. Um, the, the main wort for the boil, I added in about 40 grams of Centennial uh, at the 15, no, 10 minute mark, at the 10 minute mark before the end of the boil. So I'm going to get somewhere around 8 to 10 IBUs from that one. So hopefully that's not too much to inhibit any of the bacterial, um, you know, I don't know if there's Pediococcus in there or Lactobacillus to do some souring as well as uh, some uh, brett in order to do, add some funky notes that I would get from any of the Cantillon dregs for this for the secondary uh, with the T58. So that's gonna be kind of interesting. So okay, so here's one beer. I went ahead and this one is the Omega Yeast Labs. Here's the regimen for it. And then this is the second one where I'm gonna add in the uh, Cantillon dregs in the secondary. So yeah, two different beers from one batch and um, yeah, so there it is. <laughs> That's pretty much what I've done uh, for brewing lately. Okay, so today it's transfer day for the Saisons, the Red Saison. Here I'm transferring the uh, T58. It's uh, looking pretty good. Not really worried about clarity at this point because I'm gonna put it into this carboy aka better bottle and here's the one that's going to receive the uh, wild yeast and bacteria from my Cantillon uh, uh, culture and then down there at the bottom I've got the uh, the other one that was the monster saison and that's going to be um, dosed with some brett so let's go ahead and get this one transferred first and then we'll, uh, we'll pitch the uh, wild yeast and bacteria. Okay, so here we go. Looking at the red saison. Uh, let's see. This is the one that does not have any of the uh, hops in it. It's coming in right about 10, 10. Uh, about 10, 10, 10, 11. Let's see if we can get a... Closer picture on that. Yeah. About 10, 11 there. Okay, so that's the color of it. It's a pretty nice looking color for red saison. It's more a little bit on the browner side, but that's okay for right now. What do I have right here is the uh, culture from uh, build up the dregs from Cantillon. So you see, it's a pretty nice uh, thick culture there. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump out most of this and then uh, just have enough to stir that up and pour it into the fermenter. Okay, here we go. It's a nice little culture there. It's got a really nice uh, sour note to it, sort of a funky sour. And then let's just go ahead and put that right in there. There we go.
Now, before I do anything else, I'm also going to, um, I did shake it up a little bit there just to get some of that culture off the edge of the uh, carboy. But now I'll go ahead and uh, purge it with CO2. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and exchange that really quickly with the uh, blow off once I get it set where it's going to stay for the next uh, year or so. Okay, so now with the Omega, uh, the Omega Yeast Labs fermented beer, you can see it's really, really nice and clear. Uh, this one, though, compared to the T58, this one dropped down to about 1.003, so even seven points lower. Um, so at least there's still something left in there for the Brett, but, um, not a lot. <laughs> so hopefully I'll go ahead and just let the Brett work on that last bit for probably two months and I'll be using the, uh, OWL or OYL 218, all the Brett's, uh, strains. So let's go ahead and crack this open and get that into the fermenter and then we'll go ahead and, um, purge that with CO2 as well. Oh wow, that does smell very nice, very bready. Boom. All right, go to work. Not going to be able to purge this one as well as I did the last one just because and I can't stick this little tube inside this little hole at the top otherwise the top of it just sort of lifts up like that Okay, that's that. Now well, let's go ahead and get this one settled back in. All right, let's go ahead and get it all wrapped up. All right, well, there she is all wrapped up, ready to go. Now I'll keep her right about 20 degrees for the next uh, couple months I guess uh, looking to finish this one near the end of June so I'll give this uh, I'll give the Brett a couple months to work on it and uh, we'll check in uh, probably in about another month and see how it's going I'll take a little sample out the top and check it out okay in terms of pH both beers are right around 4.2 this is the uh, monster saison strain from Omega yeast labs this one ended in at 4.21, the T58 ended in at 4.19, so right around 4.2 pH for both of them. I also went ahead and kegged up my uh, Vienna Lager. Um, tasting really, really nice, really happy with that one. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to share that with you, give you a taste and notes on that uh, on the uh, next Homebrew Wednesday video. <music>
what a Vienna lager is uh, supposed to look like. So let me go ahead and show you what a Vienna lager should look like. Here I have one from uh, Hansa. That's their uh, Vienna lager, of course. So let's get this poured into a glass and do a bit of a comparison. You see much, much lighter. Definitely darker than the Hellas and darker than the a Pilsner, of course. So Vienna Lager is gonna be a little bit different. So you see the difference in those two beers um, right up front. So <clears throat> obviously I missed the, the mark on the color. Um, but yeah, I will say first and foremost that I actually really, really do enjoy this beer and I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. Uh, so let's go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and get the aroma on the original. As I would expect, it's got sort of a nice, really light maltiness to it on the toasty end. And that's really what is the driving force of this beer, is that it is a malty, toasty flavor uh, coming through, light bitterness, and, and really that's about it. Other than that, it's like clean, dry, crisp, and... Yeah, that's what a Vienna Lager should be. Easy drinking. The aroma on mine, very, very similar. Uh, there, it is a nice, light, malty um, toastiness to it, but it's like a dark toast versus a light toast. And that's really where it comes down to this. Um, in terms of flavor, on the original, more of that sort of um, deep, bready toastiness coming through on that one. Very light on the bitterness. Um, yeah, a very nice overall beer. I'm actually really impressed with uh, their job on that. Very, very similar to the ones that I had down in Austria uh, a couple months ago. So on mine, Again, very, very similar. The color is a little bit deceiving because if I was to close my eyes and I drank these two beers side by side, I don't think I would be able to tell a very big difference between them. Mine is, I think, a little bit, just a percentage point maybe sweeter. Let me go back to the original. A different type of sweetness. I actually think mine's a little bit crisper, cleaner, um, and this one is a little bit more closer to a uh, light medium body. Mine is uh, <clears throat> light medium as well, but it just seems a little bit not thinner, but just crisper, cleaner, drier. And uh, yeah, that may have to do with the water additions that I put into the beer, but uh, I think that would be the only difference. So mine is like a, like a dark toast, and this would be like a light toast. But again, overall, extremely happy with the way that that turned out. Will I make it again? Yes, but not with the Cara Aroma that I used for getting that color. When I do make that beer again, it will be with just Vienna and Melodoidin malt, and that's it. Uh, I may do an experiment, um, not an experiment really, it's just a little bit of testing ahead of time. So I'll take like 100 grams of Vienna malt, put it into um, three or four different uh, 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 glasses or whatever it is I need to do. And basically I'll do like a mini mash on about 100 grams on each uh, container. And then also add in uh, uh, basically the varying degrees of melanoidin that I expect in order to get the color dialed in. Then I will see what the color is and if I think it needs to be a little bit darker, then I'll add in a smaller percentage of, I'll probably stick with the Cara Aroma because the flavor that I get from that is really nice. Um, they're very, very similar, 
but obviously the color is just way beyond what I was going for. So yeah, um, again, just Vienna malt, uh, melanoidin, probably a maximum 10%, and then see where that color is uh, in relation to this one, because this one really is where I want to go. It needs to be an amber uh, color beer in order to uh, fit in with the style guidelines and as I, I would like to be there you know I don't want to be a stickler about guidelines and all that other stuff associated with it but you know it's it's an and it's an attractive beer and that's kind of one of the um, um, attractive things about it so yeah cheers so that's it guys Right on cue. That's the uh, comparison of two different Vienna uh, interpretations. And uh, so mine, uh, one of the originals from Hansa. And so there it is. That's my specimen. And thanks for watching. So uh, yeah, that's, that's about all that's going on in my neck of the woods. I hope that you guys are having a hell of a week. And have a better weekend. Cheers. Cheers to everyone.